I just wanna be, I just wanna be successful. Here we are in the first, first group is going to talk about non-financial performance indicators. And please begin. Okay. So we started with brand equity, which is the, the, rep the reputation of a brand, uh, who they're endorsed by as well, celebrities, product placements, stuff like that. Um, they try and build brand ambassadors, so people who will represent the brand and like really support them. We have also corporate social responsibility, which is the ethical, social, and environmental policies that they follow. Um, we have Tom Shoes, for example. For every pair that they purchase, they donate a pair of shoes to a child in need. Uh, Tim Hortons, who sponsors free skates and events like that, sports for children. Um, and we also have aesthetic appeal. So our example there is Apple, which everyone knows. Um, they're recognizable, they're distinguished. Everything that they make has a certain uh, flair to it and you can identify it as their product. Uh, we also have customer service. It affects the customer loyalty, which you want to build a consumer base that's really strong. And we have online feedback and promotion, so how people regard you online, like in reviews, and how you sell your product online, like YouTube videos and things. And uh, the last one is corporate beliefs and political opinions. So you gave us the example of Chick-fil-A not supporting gay marriage. And then we had Starbucks who recently released a press release. And um, what they did was they said that they supported gay marriage. And then so that builds their customer base. And they really say who they're trying to target. Them. Okay, so a few indicators that people are successful without financially relating it directly would be something like Red Bull doing the space dive. I don't know if anybody saw that, but um, they sponsored a space dive, which is just ridiculously un unheard of. Um, so that, that kind of shows if they can kind of do that, and everybody hears of it, that's a wicked uh, relation of success because it's very different and very, very well broadcasted. Another thing was um, um, Drake. Uh, Drake is really wicked... Um, I'd say advertising campaigns. One of the ones that I thought was very different, he bought this song. You know when you go into Toronto and it says, Welcome to Toronto? Um, he pretty much took over that sign and put his logo on it so that when you'd come in, you'd see the Drake logo before his album was coming out. And that's not really financially directly related. You just see it and you're like, Wow, this dude bought that sign. That's just yeah. success. Like, Good example of publicity. Do that, you know what I mean? Um, another thing uh, kind of related to Drake, not that I like Drake that much, just this kind of works. Um, <laughs> He, some girl got Drake tattooed on her forehead. He never asked her to do that, but to have the letters Drake on her forehead, that's ridiculous. Like, what kind of power do you have to have to have someone do that? You know what I mean? Um, let's see, Cadbury's eyebrow commercial. Um, they had these two kids do these uh, eyebrow tricks where they just look at the camera and do like these things with their eyebrows. Um, and that was really successful because other people would just do stuff with their eyebrows and be like, what are you doing with the eyebrows? Did you see the Cadbury commercial? And that's another example. Anyone want to say anything? Yeah, there was also another com uh, commercial of uh, companies competing against each other. So, for example, the Coke and Pepsi, uh, it was kind of old where the Cokes, they would pull up on a red light and a Coke truck would come beside each other and it would start bouncing up and down. And then the other Pepsi truck would do it even, uh, like, bounce even more. And so that is something that is... Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you can compare two brands like that, that kind of shows that you're equal to them. If Pepsi says Coke is in their ad or, like, Samsung says iPhone commercials in their commercial, it shows that they're also successful, so... LeBron James, he sells shoes, but uh, you know he's obviously not a corporation, and uh, his publicity uh, is spread throughout his fans who like the way he performs, and therefore he, um, you know, he basically brands himself and his performance within them, and that's another financial indicator that uh, you know helps promote his, uh, you know, his brand or his his shoes, and uh, you know that's how he creates representatives, uh, ambassadors, and so on. Also, the University of Toronto, mm -hmm. that's another one, is still a organization for profit. And, uh, you know, these hoodies themselves, they have a branding on them that indicates, you know, this is a prestigious school, you know, uh, people respect, you know, the students, you know, uh, are so confident in their, in the success of the school that they actually advertise it everywhere. Um, and some profs too. And some profs too, yep. I'm proud to teach here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, another, another important thing is brands usually create, you know, um, emotional, you know, emotional connections mm -hmm. with their customers, with their consumers by putting confident images, you know, in some classes we're learning about uh, advertising, you know, 
images such as Ad Gemma, Arcoban, you know, they're confident images and they, they create, they're also another like non financial indicator. Um, then we talked about, you know, Lou Lemon, the people who invest, you know, essentially moms, invested in uh, this company by buying the stocks themselves and therefore the stocks went up uh, by themselves. You know, so that's another like, you know, non financial indicator. Okay, so first thing we had uh, social media. So if your products are trending on Twitter, um, the amount of followers you have. Um, we also have uh, a lot of companies actually go out and employ bloggers to blog about their products. Um, so it, that's kind of a free way to get your products out there. Uh, also, as mentioned before, customer service, so customer loyalty and word of mouth, it's a really big thing. Um, sometimes the term actually becomes the generic term for the brand, so uh, KD uh, is like craft dinner, but it is, people say KD when it's for President's Choice or just macaroni and cheese in general. Um, celebrities, uh, sometimes they're paid to wear the product, sometimes they aren't, so Steve Jobs um, always wore New Balance shoes, which I don't think he was paid to do. Um, another example would be rappers sing about alcohol, so the Cavorcier example, and then rum and Red Bull. I'm drinking rum and Red Bull. A lot of uh, brands actually have kind of slang names, so Timmy's is an example, and it's used in everyday speech. So I think that also helps brands because people just kind of say it. Oh, let's go to Timmy's. Let's get Timmy's. It's it just flows really nicely. Heard another one that's new the other day. Let's go for Scottish food. You know what that means? McDonald's. <laughs> I had no idea. Someone said, are you going for Scottish food for lunch? I went, what's Scottish food? McDonald's. Uh -huh. but, Gordon, but. Um, also, if a brand has a lot of fakes, mm -hmm. that may be seen as a bad thing, but it could also be seen as a good thing, mm -hmm. um, especially for expensive brands like Louis Vuitton. Although they're not directly making money from the fakes, mm -hmm. it still is promoting their brand. Mm -hmm. And um, French Connection was a company that actually made a cheaper line of knockoffs, FC UK, mm -hmm. so to kind of combat that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it ends up being another market for them, a cheaper market. Yep. So referring to uh, corporate social responsibility um, or any branding in general, uh, there's right. a lot of brand competition like uh, uh, car companies. In 2009, BMW started a feud with, uh, or uh, you could call it a feud, with Mercedes. They initially started bra uh, branding, putting a huge sign up saying, you know, uh, Mercedes, compete with this. And uh, it's, it's actually uh, funny because Mercedes then uh, well, they went along with it and made a bigger sign for Beamer and said, okay, here you go. And that's all they said, here we go. Um, so then Audi, Lexus uh, also got involved and started putting signs around, making fun of uh, their competition. And finally, at the end of it, Rolls-Royce came in and said, we beat all of you. <laughs> that's it. Um, so there's advertising that way through other people's uh, branding. But also then there's movie advertising and video game adver uh, advertising. So in video games these days, you can see Apple, you can see, um, I think it, was, it wasn't it was Tim Hortons, but uh, it was Starbucks in a game called Daisy. And everywhere you go, you can see these Starbucks signs all over this uh, zombie wasteland, right? And, you know, it's not a big thing, but every time I see it and I'm playing the game, you know, I'm seeing Starbucks. So, Which reminds me, one of the things we're going to talk about in 322 course, I'll just put this in the video, is... A positioning branding inside video games is a growing market segment, which you guys, when you graduate, can be part of helping companies market that way. Okay, and uh, also social media websites, as uh, uh, well, talked about uh, from the other groups, mm -hmm. uh, or the barcodes by BlackBerry. So, uh, again, it was Starbucks that had the uh, BlackBerry barcodes, but that's also everywhere in advertising. Anytime you go to a, um, what's it called, a, a supermarket, you can see on the uh, craft dinner um, or any other box of food, um, the barcode, which will include nutritional, whatever, and uh, it's advertising that way. So, um, then we also uh, talked about finally the ethical and environmental responsibility. So, Body Shop, um, one of the makeup lines, um, they uh, they implemented the no animal testing, which is great because it brings in uh, brings in people who support no animal testing and they'll buy their product. Um, and also ethical behavior, the IKEA, um, the best bad guy. The idea that IKEA goes in and they do the uh, child the child labor, but also they're bringing the jobs to those children, which is kind of a weird concept. But they're giving them time for uh, school um, rather than just making them work a certain amount of hours a weekend. It's uh, could be well, a bad guy image. Mm -hmm. so. Good, thank you. I just wanna be, I just wanna be successful. I just wanna be.